Let's move on to part five of chapter five, the skeletal system, bones of the pelvic girdle. The pelvic girdle attaches the lower limbs to the axial skeleton. It is formed by a pair of coxa bones, each consisting of three separate bones, the ilium, the ischium, and the pubis. Now the total weight of the upper body rests on the pelvis and it protects several organs, the reproductive organs, the urinary bladder, bladder, and part of the large intestines. Now the female pelvis is modified for childbearing. It tends to be wider, shallower, lighter, and rounder than the male pelvis. The thigh is the region between the hip and the knee, and it has one bone, the femur. The femur is the largest, longest, and strongest bone in the body. It articulates proximately with the hip via a ball-like head and distally with the knee at the lateral and medial condyles. The patella, which is a triangular sesamoid bone that articulates with the femur at the patella surface. The leg of the lower limbs consists of a region between the knee and the ankle, and it has two bones, the tibia and the fibula. The tibia is the weight-bearing bone of the leg. The fibula, fibula is a stick-like non-weight-bearing bone. The tarsus consists of seven tarsal bones that make up the posterior half of the foot. The metatarsus consists of five small long bones called metatarsal bones numbered one to five beginning at the medial side of the foot. There are 14 phalanges of the toes. The great toe is digit number one and it has two phalanges, just like in the hand, and the other toes, numbered two through five, have three phalanges. The arches of the foot are maintained by interlocking foot bones, ligaments, and the pull of tendons during muscle activity. There are two longitudinal and one transverse arch. This is the end of part five of chapter five, the skeletal system. Hope you enjoyed it. See you next time.